Between August 12, 2007 and May 13, 2009, a UFO sighting was recorded on video by an eyewitness on over 15 occasions, some occurring several nights in a row in the exact same spot. It may well be the most important UFO and alien sighting combined in history. Let's examine. Welcome to the 19th episode of Code Blue, where we explore the vast and mysterious realms of unexplained phenomena. I am Thor, and thanks for tuning in. Today, we're examining the Comburgas, Turkey, serial UFO and alien sighting. The event, because it's more than just one incident, happened on the northern shore of the Sea of Marmara, Turkey, about 25 miles west of Istanbul, a vacation town with hotels on the water overlooking the vast sea that separates the Mediterranean and the Black Sea and is surrounded by Turkey on all sides. The sea splits Turkey between Europe to the west and Asia to the east. There were lots of UFO sightings reported over the Sea of Marmara in 2007 and 2008. In this case, a night watchman at a vacation resort named Murat Yalman at the age of 51 witnessed and videotaped the same UFO craft hovering over the sea about 10 to 15 miles using a Canon Mini DV camcorder type of camera that is detailed below. And he did this repeatedly, sometimes night after night in 2008, always witnessing the same craft in nearly the same position. It's as if they were posing for him, and thousands of other eyewitnesses confirmed seeing the same craft. His is the only video in existence, and it is remarkable. Among the videos captured by Murad on six consecutive nights in June 2008, footage shows the craft hovering and observing him as he records the inhabitants of the craft staring back at him through the windows, sometimes one, sometimes two, and on one occasion it looks like three humanoids can be seen through the windows, staring in Murad's direction. The camera is slightly above amateur grade, a mid-level below professional grade, but that explains why there aren't multiple camcorder footages available, because most common camcorders from that time simply wouldn't have captured the light or been able to focus the dim object at such a distance. He had a slightly upgraded video camera, that's why he caught it. You are witnessing possibly the best evidence footage combining a UFO craft and its occupants that exist and that ever existed. What is perhaps most astounding is the recurring presence of the occupants in the same window, almost in the same position, staring back at the north shore of Kumburgas, right back at Murad as he continues to record. It's nothing less than astounding. You can see them moving around. Look at them. There's two of them right there, staring back in the middle of a craft that looks to be oval shaped, not necessarily a full round circle. And their outline reminds us of images of the greys. Tall or short is hard to tell though. At dawn, 
there's only one light source. You can't really make up a craft's shape, but the light source is still there in the exact same direction. Some are witnessed at dusk, others right before dawn. They're orange to red to amber, but mostly white. Argument has been made against this footage because of its instability, absence of focus, absence of zoom in and outs, something that provides a tangible reference to a ground-connected object. But let's remember, Murad isn't a professional cameraman, and for all these nights, and repeated nights, it is true, he never thought of bringing a tripod, and that is frustrating. But it is also true that Achieving a steady camera while holding it with your hands is incredibly difficult, especially when the object you're trying to film is at such a distance with such a low light source. It makes it hard to focus, it makes it hard to point at it and stay at it, and it's incredibly difficult to zoom in and out of it. And the object in question is already very dark. Only the moonlight reflects stuff of it. Entire conferences have been held on this video alone, studying its detailed content, which the Turkish Council on Scientific Research has deemed authentic and undoctored, and that the object filmed at night and at dawn is a real physical object, reflecting the available moonlight. Research companies and institutes in Japan, Chile, Mexico, and Russia have concluded the same. They've also confirmed that footage being consistent with the camera in use, including the American traditional date stamp displaying month, date, and year in that order, and that they are true and accurate. Murat's presence at the resort on duty during the days in question has also been confirmed. He was exactly where these videos were shot, as confirmed by the date and time stamp of his employment. I know there's a lot of timestamps and dates on these videos and they're more or less chronological as shown here, but uh, you have a full list of all dates and times of his recordings below, so don't worry about it. It establishes a repeated pattern of sightings, near identical, showing the same object and it's been authenticated by multiple independent accounts. Now, this video from the 12th of June, 2008, seems to show an aircraft that is slightly different from the others. It has more light. The moonshine is brighter that night. But um, I venture to guess that it's simply facing a different direction. That's why we don't see in the window facing us directly. It is the same craft seen from a different angle. It's almost like it's morphing into something we know and recognize from the other videos. But it's facing left as opposed to straight at us. from the perspective of Murat. If these are tall greys, they would be around six feet tall, which would make the distance between the left edge and the right edge as seen from our perspective somewhere in the range of a hundred feet. Sometimes all you see is a dot, a distance. Stationary in the sky, like a star. Even at dawn, these six lights may come from the same craft, 
They may be from a different craft. They may be from three different crafts. Because if we remember the other craft, it had distribution of light sources that looked to be at least four, two to each side, and nothing but the window in the middle. I believe the distance is between 10 and 15 miles from the perspective of Murat's camera. This one is among the most clear, providing the greatest detail of architecture, of construct. And it's almost like the window in the middle is covered up at this point. And our eye wanders to the right, to those soft, curved light sources that may not be light sources at all, or the lights are off, and what we're seeing is a reflection of the moonlight using the semi-professional Canon camera, capable of the zoom necessary to catch the reflection of the moon on the object. I agree, it's totally frustrating to watch this shaky handheld camera footage. But what needs to be recognized is that from one day to the next, the shape of the object is consistent. Even the position of the beings inside the window is remarkably the same from one shot to the next. This one shows the craft at a different angle. And we get to enjoy the underside that seems to have a light source of its own. Six lights in a row underneath the craft. But it looks to be the same craft, only tilted slightly differently and higher up. This image has been super enhanced and enlarged and it gives us an intriguing visual on the anatomy of the beings inside the craft that makes them look very much like humanoid greys. And with reflection on the water, you see two distinct lights at a lower angle than previous videos. These could be the ends of the same craft or two different crafts with a reflection on the water, but the craft is definitely closer to the water at this angle, and, and the lights disappeared one after the other, not together, a common occurrence when multiple lights are seen in a UFO sighting. This one is interesting because it not only shows the beings in the window there, but there's a texture to the edge of the craft, not as evident in other time videos. It's time to accept its reality. An aircraft of alien origin, with at least three occupants present, witnessed not just by Murad and his camera, but thousands of others on the shoreline of the Sea of Marmara. Enjoy it. Accept it, embrace it, and study it. Because there it is right in front of our eyes, as real as a human-made aircraft, only it's not. It's of unknown or non-human origins, and it's time we fully understood what that means. You can watch or listen to this and other podcasts on Project Blue Book, and please check out bluebook.tv for more programs exploring the unexplained. It's always free. Please subscribe, and each day, let's show compassion and kindness. I am Thor, and thank you for listening. Stay tuned, and see you next time.